Hi guys, Aaron here again, and today I'm going to be showing you how I find the best property investment deals in five simple steps. So for those of you who don't know already, I have a property trading business, a new startup, and part of that business is to source properties on behalf of my investor clients. So I'm going to show you exactly step by step how I do that. And everything that we're going to cover right now, these five simple steps, is exactly what I'm doing right now, as in I've done it this week to find properties for my investors. So it's live, it is current. This is what I'm doing right now, and it is working. Okay, then guys, before we deep dive into five steps, just to give you a bit of context around the business model, it's very simple. It's about providing my clients with the best property investment deals without effort or sacrifice on their part. So it's offering a bespoke, hands-free investment service where we go from sourcing the property all the way through to tenanting the property at the other end. So it's as passive as it gets for our investor clients. So that is the value proposition. And essentially these five simple steps is the first part of that about sourcing the properties. And as a little bonus, if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna be doing a demo on property data just to show you how I use these five simple steps uh, for real. Okay, so step one then is property pipeline. And really it's all about getting properties coming in through the pipeline. Um, obviously, if we're going to be sourcing the best property investment deals, we need a constant supply of properties coming in our way. So there are three main ways that I'm doing this, uh, and this is what I'm actually doing right now. Uh, so there's many ways you can source a property pipeline, but these are the three that I'm actually using right now. So the first one is direct to vendor marketing and specifically Facebook ads. Uh, the Facebook ads are super simple. It's just essentially coming up with my statement or my requirements. I put a message out there uh, and it gives me a way to contact the right people. They can either contact me directly or leave their information and I can contact them and then we can have a discussion that way. So that's just one way of bringing in property leads. The second way I'm doing it is I'm using agents, which seems pretty obvious. They are selling the majority of the property on the market. So it would make sense that you go to agents. So it's really about going to them with purpose and understanding what your requirements are, your specific requirements, letting them know this, and then allowing them to bring those properties to you. Uh, so it's a mix of estate agents in my areas and letting agents. So for example, letting agents, they've got a lot of contacts with landlords currently on their books. If there's any landlords that are looking to sell their properties or sell the entire portfolio potentially, if you can just let yourself be known to them and what your requirements are, then they may be able to source some sort of properties that way. So it's, for me, it's about just reaching out to my agent, just letting them know what I want and letting them bring properties to me that way. And the third way of bringing in more properties is I use property data, which is a great software tool. Uh, it essentially extrapolates data from a number of sources, brings it all into one place, and it has a great search function. So it's amazing to be able to search all on market opportunities and it brings in a whole load of data along with that. Uh, and it's just a constant pipeline of properties just by using those search functions, So, which I'll show you later in the demo. Okay, so step two is area analysis. Uh, and I'm talking about the very localized area, not the broader area. That kind of comes into your criteria, which you should already have set. I've done a video separately on criteria, so I'll, maybe I'll link that at the end or put it in the description somewhere. Um, so that'd be your bigger picture. But what I'm talking about now is once you've got the properties coming in to locally analyze the area at which that property is in. So to give you a real example, one of my key areas is NP23. Um, this is Ebba Vale in South Wales, if you don't know. So, but that is a very broad postcode, whereas there's certain sectors postcodes within that that are better than others. So if I find a property, for example, um, I then want to look at that localized area analysis. So is it on a street that I want? Because Although MP23 in general is a good area to invest for me, um, not every street is a street that I want to invest in. So I need to understand the very local data. So that's what we're talking about here. So the way I do that is I use street check. It's a really good way of just putting in the full postcode uh, and it gives you um, that very local area data. You can find demographics, the tenure of property, uh, the crime, and there's a, a number of other elements to street check. So I recommend using that. So really it's asking questions like, what are the schools like there? What are the transport links like? Is there good shops available? What's the data like? What's the connectivity like in the area? So just asking all these sort of questions to build up a picture of, is it a place that I or my tenant type would like to live in? And we also use local development plans as well. So understanding what development's going on over the next five to 10 years. Is it close to one of these local developments? Is it close to a new employment development? 
is it close to a new retail park, etc. So all these things factor in to the area analysis. And it also included in the area analysis, you can jump on to uh, Google Maps, go into the street view, uh, and you can literally take a walk around the neighborhood. So uh, you don't actually physically have to be there. Uh, it's just a good way of kind of getting a feel for the area without being there. Um, if you don't actually know the area already, obviously I recommend that you kind of know your areas that you're investing in, but that may not be always be the case. So use the street view, it's really good. So that's step two. Now we move on to step three, which is the property analysis. And again, this is a fairly simple step. This is now looking at the property and asking the question really, does it meet my, uh, my criteria? Does it meet my client's criteria? Uh, and that's essentially, is it you know the right amount of bedrooms? Is it the right price point? Uh, and then you look at the condition of the property. So typically for my real world example, I look for um, values of 120 to up to 160,000, and that's ceiling value. And if you don't know what I mean by ceiling value is if the property was at its absolute best condition, um, what would it sell for? And you do that by understanding, by using comparables. So recently sold properties. So I'll look at some properties that are very similar to the property, same number of bedrooms, same square footage, same street, ideally. Your best comparable would literally be the house next door. So what I'm doing is looking into those houses, understanding what the ceiling price for this property would be and i'm looking for it to be within that range 120 to 160 but that's going to depend on your area uh, what range would be best for your property but for me it is 120 to 160. so then it's moving on to understanding the condition of the property understanding how much i would need to spend to get up to that ceiling value it might be a lot it might be a little it really depends so it's just really about making that assessment and understanding how much i would need to invest into it to bring it up to that ceiling value now, moving on to the next step, step four, which is the offer. And you might have noticed already that we actually haven't even viewed the property yet. Now, this is intentional and that will come later. Now, you can view the property sooner, obviously, but I personally don't, and I don't see the benefit in doing so. This is just my personal preference and it's what works well with my business model right now. Um, so you may wanna view the property a lot sooner or leave it to be late, a bit later, it's up to you. So again, the offer stage is a very simple process. We've got this ceiling value of the property, so we start there. What we wanna do first is take away the profit margin that we want to make on the property investment. This will depend on the level of risk or the time and effort that I'm putting in to this property investment on how much I want to make. But again, it's entirely up to you to decide what you want to do there. So you take that away from the price, then you wanna work out all the costs that are involved in buying the property, and not just your obvious ones like your stamp duty and your legal fees, but uh, your holding costs. So if you're going to be doing a large refurb and you have a property maybe for six months without any cash coming in, then you need to think about what the costs you're going to incur over that period. So yeah, add up the holding costs. Maybe you're going to be using bridging. You can have bridging loans or um, financing to pay for. Uh, so all these things, just think about all the costs that are involved. Take that off the price. Now you want to take off, obviously, the refurb, whether it's a small amount or a large amount. The larger it is, then you wanna be making sure you're adding in contingency on that as well. So I looked, if it's a big refurb, to add 15% on the contingency. So I would take that off, and then you're left with your price you can pay for the property. It's very, very simple. It's a logical way of looking at it, and that's essentially the price I can pay for it. There's no need for negotiation around that. That is the price I'm able to pay for it. Now you really need to think about how you can add value to the offer other than financially, because that is your fixed price. And again, it's all gonna be down to your own situation, but it's really just thinking of what else can you add to the value? It's not just the price. So for a lot of vendors, the price actually is the most important element, and that's fine. If the price is the hard stop and it's not accepted, then it's not. And I get rejected a lot, and I, I would imagine that if you're doing this properly, you would be getting rejected a lot. If you're, if you're doing it right, you, would, you should be getting rejected. Now, this is why we have a property pipeline, because the chance of us getting rejected on these offers is quite high because we're looking at it from a very logical point of view, whereas a lot of time the vendors, it is, they want the most money they can get out of that property. If you're just looking at a profit point of view um, and you're fixed on that price and there's no real negotiation, a lot of time they're just going to tell you no. Uh, and that's fine if that is the case. That's why we have a lot of properties coming in. But really what you want to concentrate on is how can I add value to my offer other than on the price? So I think of things like, um, depending on your situation, obviously, or if you're working with investors or their situation, if you could buy cash is a great um, way to add value to the offer. 
cash purchase will obviously um, show them that you can move a lot faster. You're not dependent on any chains or mortgage approvals. And the other thing as well, and I always do this with my offers, is make a verbal offer and then follow that up in writing to the vendor or to an agent if you're dealing with an agent. Um, and it's putting that together. Obviously, I don't actually write a letter, but I, I write up the offer letter as a document, as a PDF, and I put it into an email um, addressed to them and just state in my intent to purchase the property attached with my proof of ID, proof of address, proof of funds, um, and my conditions of the offer. And it's just a way of making sure that you are serious about what you're doing. And it can add a lot of weight to the, to the offer. If, they've, if they're comparing two properties, or if they're comparing two offers, uh, they may actually prefer the lower value offer because it comes with the certainty and the speed. Then as someone says that they may give them 10,000 pound more, but they're waiting on their property to sell and they don't know if they can get their mortgage approved and there's no proof of funds anywhere. Like, so it's really about how can I add value to the vendor? If you are dealing directly with your vendor, then again, you've got the added benefit that you're not having to incur any costs for them through the agent. So again, they're saving some money there. That will help give your offer some weight. Obviously, you're not always dealing with direct event vendor deals, so that isn't always the case, but it is another element. Depending on who you're dealing with with the offer, uh, there can be issues with trying to put an offer in without viewing the property. Uh, if you're doing a direct to vendor, there isn't ever an issue with that. It would be the offer would be subject to the viewing, obviously. Uh, and you, you can do it with agents. Not all agents seem to be okay with that, but really they are obliged to put an offer to the vendor if you put one in. Um, it's really, again, like I said about um, going forward with intent. So if you're just sort of, um, a little bit interest in the property and yeah, you want to put an offer down straight away. They're probably not going to take you seriously, but if you've done your due diligence uh, and you've, you can prove to them that you've done a lot of analysis on the properties and you know the area um, and you're putting forward all your proofs of ID, uh, a letter in writing to the agent, there's no reason why they wouldn't then send that offer through to the vendor to review. So that brings us to step five, which is the viewing. Finally, we're going to view the property. Now we've had our offer accepted, uh, subject to the viewing. And all we're doing here is just confirming everything we already know and just ensuring that all our analysis is actually correct um, and that there isn't any surprises. Like there isn't just a huge hole in the wall that they hadn't mentioned before or there's a massive mold issue that they told you there was no mold. Really, it's just confirming everything is exactly how it was described. And then this gives you time to bring your builder with you. This is where now you'd get your full costings from the, your trades team. Uh, and it just ties everything up nicely. So you've got a full list of how much you're going to pay and you've confirmed all your analysis um, on paper you've now confirmed it for real um, and yeah now it's time to just issue your memorandum of sale either you write that up and send that to the direct to vendor and instruct the solicitors or let the agents deal with that as well um, and then yeah you start to move on then into the case management which is another phase of the project if you like um, which we're not going to cover now, we'll cover in another video. Okay, so let's summarize our five simple steps. So step one is your property pipeline. So just coming up with clever ways of bringing in a consistent supply of properties. So that's step one. Step two is your area analysis. And we're talking your localized area. So once you find a property, zoom in into that property area and understand if it is a property that meets all your requirements and all your criteria. Then step three is your property analysis. So understanding if the actual physical property itself meets all your criteria and ticks all your boxes on that front. Understand the refurbishment um, and how much you need to, how much value you need to add to bring it up to the ceiling value. So that's what you're doing there. Step four then is the offer. So putting in a decisive, clear offer and trying to add as much value to that offer as possible. And then finally, step five is you go and view the property in person. Bring your builder along to get a full and final quote on any costings. Just confirm everything that you'd already analyzed. And if everything is great um, and as described, and then you're good to go, you issue your memo, and then you essentially move into case management. Okay, so that is the summary of your five simple steps there. I hope that's brought a lot of value to you. If you're still watching, thank you so much. Uh, we're about to jump into the live demo now. If you have got value, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe. Um, and yeah, I'd really, really appreciate that. Hit the notification bell. I release a video every single Wednesday. So yeah, look out for those. Uh, now let's jump into the live demo. Okay, so here we are, we are in property data. And as you can see, I have searched an area, we've got NP23, 
Uh, I've gone into an actual specific sector, so MP236. And if you can see, um, it paints a little picture of it on the map for you there, so you know the area you're looking at. So I really want to quickly just show you through here. So like I said, um, this is just a demonstration of how I'm, using, how I'm using property data to help me with this five-step process of sourcing the properties. So it's mainly around the area and property analysis that helps me with most. But obviously there is still the sourcing side or actually generating the property pipeline because there's a lot of properties you can just source straight from this, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and also formulating it all together to come up with a great offer. Um, yeah, what we've got here in the tabs, we've got prices. I'm just going to show you your asking prices uh, in the area as data points and also your sold prices as well. So it's good to see both of those. Uh, what's good is where you can actually see it on a map format or prefer if you prefer to see it in this chart format, it's totally up to you. Um, same with the rents. Um, again, it'll tell you what your average rents are for your areas. So for me here, I've got my two bed, my three bed average rents. Obviously, with the price and the rent data, you can now have calculated yields uh, and this is pretty accurate actually yeah between six and seven percent um, is about what it is for this area um, so yeah good good yields um, yeah looking in the growth tab as well then you can see the growth over time so again really strong growth here it tells you exactly year on year and you can also see current year the last three years and the last five years so really good really good data you can go into uh, activity so we're looking at average sales, this might not mean too much to you um, with the stock turnover, but I kind of use it best when I'm comparing against other areas. So if I'm looking at a number of postcode areas, I want to see what one's in more demand. Uh, and again, just an indication uh, of where people are trying to buy right now. And it does have an impact then uh, on your capital appreciation as well. So that's good. You've also got stock as well, which I use to analyze my areas um, and the property type so again so what you're going to see is your um, average properties or the most common property types so here we've got terrace properties clearly three beds um, and square footage area so it's really good to know that's okay that's the type of property i want to be looking for uh, and really that's down to your rental demand you want to go with the most common property type you're going to have the most uh, demand for that type of property um, and another great one is the occupancy as well. I've mentioned it before, um, but the owner occupied at being at 60% or more is a great indication of capital appreciation. More and more people want to actually live in these areas long term. So this is actually just slightly above average, which is great. So 67.4%, the average is 60. So social is actually below average, which is great. Uh, and the rental is about, about right for average. So yeah. You can also go and find agent data as well, which is really useful. So again, I talked about using agents to source properties as well. This is going to show you who the agents are in your area and who has the most stock. It's a really good indication there. You can get on the phone to these guys uh, and start making some start making some new friends. Same with the letting agents as well. Uh, and then you've got monitor. So you can monitor the certain areas on different key aspects. Uh, and the main one here is the demographics. So the demographics shows um, a lot of different data points. Uh, and then you've got your area data, which is really useful. Uh, you can see all the planning information that's going on, crime, schools. Uh, in Wales, they actually have this, all the school data. So you have to still do it the old fashioned way with the S team reports. But if you're in England, uh, it will work for you. You can get the Ofsted reports which is really good uh, and then you've got restaurants and green space as well uh, and it takes you onto the final tab which is the feed and the feed gives you all the properties um, that are currently for sale in this area um, and it gives it to you the most recent on the market so you can see this one here zero days on the market one day on the market so yeah really good just to see what the most current properties are available for rent recent transactions and the planning permission uh planning applications so yeah really good tool and this is just one area guys so if you click into research here this is local data we're looking at but we've got all these extra things we can do um, postcode data i've shown in another video around that helps you uh, formulate your criteria again the sourcing which i use heavily um, when i'm trying to bring in as many properties as i can uh, it's just a really efficient way of sourcing properties because you can get really specific with the data you're looking for 
Um, but you're not cycling through a lot of different properties. You can just go directly to the ones you know are going to be most relevant to you. So it's really, really useful. Rent to rent there as well is, um, if that is your thing, that can be good. Searching titles and company titles is really useful. You can do letter, sending letters direct to vendor, which is really good. And then you've got your evaluate tab, um, which again, there's some useful data in here, the plot map, um, which kind of gives you, uh, gives you a lot of data actually, kind of similar to Nimbus maps, if any of you have used that before, really good. The comparables is one I use every single time, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and it gives you all the sold data, um, the types of property, it gives you all the information you need um, to do your comparable searching. Uh, and that's it guys. So yeah, just a very quick couple of minutes um, going through how I use it uh, and really, really recommend using it. If you're trying to find the best property investment deals, you need to really increase the volume of properties that you're looking at. Uh, property data allows you to do that um, really well, really efficiently. So yeah, absolutely recommend um, going in and having a look. You've got, I think it gives you a two week trial still, um, two week free trial. And then there's a number of different levels of plans you can you can then buy so yeah take a look guys uh yeah i hope you got some value from that cool speak to you soon okay guys i hope you enjoyed that demo there thank you so much for watching i hope you got as much value as possible out of the demo and the five simple steps there um put those together uh, and hopefully uh, it will help you on your investment journey so if you've got any questions for me please put them in the comments below uh other than that i look forward to seeing you in the next video